Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video I will be going through how to work out loads and also how to carry out a load takedown. Let's dive straight in. Our first example is a timber floor. This is very commonly used in residential houses. Let's work our way from the top down. So first we will have some finishes, now this could be carpet or tiles. For now I will assume a 6mm thick tile with a density of 24 kilonewtons per meter cubed. You can find the densities of materials using the red book. This is a book I highly suggest every engineer should own. As you can see mine is in pretty rough condition, as it just shows how much I've used it. If you can't find a density in the red book, Google is your best friend. We want area loads in kilonewtons per meter squared, so we need to convert 6 mil into meters by multiplying by 10 to the power of minus 3, and then multiply by the density. This gives you the floor area load of 0.144 but I like to round up, so I'll call this 0.15 kilonewtons per meter squared. Below the finishes, we will have an 18 mil thick chipboard. Some common alternatives you might hear could be 22 mil ton groove chipboard or 18 mil plywood. So from the red book, the density of chipboard is 7 kilonewtons per meter cube. So doing the same multiplication as we did before, we get an area load of 0.126, but I will round up again to 0.15 kilonewtons per meter squared. Below this we will have some timber joists. For this example we are using 50 by 250 deep joists at 400mm centres. So first we will need to calculate the area of joists and then multiply by how many joists there are per metre. So 50 times 250 times 1000 over 400 gets you metres squared per metre times the density gets you the area load of 0.1375. I will again round this up to 0.2 to be slightly more conservative as the density of timber can vary and we currently don't know the exact density. Under the joist typically would be a plasterboard ceiling. Plasterboard comes in 12.5 or 13 mil thickness. Density of plasterboard from the red book is 9 kilonewtons per meter cubed. So that gets us an area load of 0.117. Let's round up to 0.15. This can cover some service loads such as light fixtures and cabling. Now all we need to do is sum it all up and there we have the total floor load for this timber floor. If you are enjoying this video, please smash that like button. If you want to see more content, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Next up, we have a precast concrete floor. These are commonly used in residential apartment blocks or flats as they have good acoustic properties and are quick and easy to install. Not sure why I didn't even have finishes down, but just roll with it. As it is a separating floor, it will be common to have screwed over insulation. So typically we'd see 75 mil screwed with a density of 22 kilonewtons per meter cubed Multiply together and we get 1.65 kilonewtons per meter squared. Insulation is very lightweight, so let's just assume 0.05. Feel free to look this up on Google, but 0.05 is typically what I normally use for insulation. Below the insulation, we have the precast plank. Precast plank manufacturers will tend to supply you with load span tables, and within these tables, they should provide you with a self weight. Each manufacturer varies slightly. In my example, I'm using a Bison precast holocore plank. 150 mil thick, so the self weight is 2.4 kilonewtons per, per meter squared. Under the planks, we are likely to have some sort of suspended ceiling to allow services to run below the plank. If we assume that the ceiling itself is around the same as passport ceiling that we have calculated in the previous example, we can allow for some slightly heavier services. So let's use 0.1 for the services, giving us a total of 0.25 kilonewtons per meter squared for the ceiling and services. Sum it all up and we get 4.35 kilonewtons per meter squared. Next we have a timber roof. Timber roof construction varies a lot, so if you are unsure what the build-up is, just google timber roof. As there is such variance with the build-up, it's best to be conservative in the early stages of the design and adjust the build-up as necessary once you have more information from the architect. For a timber flat roof, I'm going to assume we are going to use some sort of felt, so let's allow 0.1 kilonewtons per meter squared. We might have some plywood, so like chipboard, density times fitness gets you area load 0.15, rounded up. We have some counter battens or fairings, these are quite light so let's go with 0.1. Joist, insulation and ceiling like in a previous example, so 0.2, 0.05 and 0.15. Next let's move on to some wall types. The calculations are the same as before so I won't go as in depth on how to calculate each individual load. We might see some timber frame construction on housing developments, so a typical build up would be two layers of plasterboard sandwiching timber studs and insulation. Beyond the timber stud and plasterboard will normally be a gap or a cavity. Then we have some brickwork. Brickwork density varies a lot from 16 to 22. 
Again, since we don't know exactly, let's go with the higher and more conservative load for now of 22 kN per meter cubed. So to get the area load, multiply by the thickness by the density, so 0.1 meters multiplied by 22 gets you 2.2 kN per meter squared. Summing up all the loads, we get 2.7 kN per meter squared. Instead of a timber frame, we might be using low bearing block work as the inner leaf. So similar to timber, we have a layer of plasterboard over the block work. As this is load bearing block work, we would want to be using some medium dense blocks, so we'll go with 18 kN per meter cubed, and this gets us an area load of 1.8. Insulation can't go in between studs like in a timber stud wall, so the insulation goes on the outside. Again we have a cavity and a brickwork like the last example. This gives us a total load of 4.2 kN per meter squared. SFS walling or commonly known names are light gauge steel framing. These are very commonly used in new build schools to minimise edge loads on the perimeter beams. Similar to plasterboard, cement particle boards are used and these have a similar density to plasterboard. Also similar to timber stud, you'd expect a board on both sides of, a, of the SFS stud. SFS stud is very light, like precast planks you would want to double check with a, with a supplier but typically they would be around 0.5 kN per meter squared. Insulation on the outside and brickwork beyond, just like in previous examples with a total area of 3.5 kN per meter squared. Next we have an internal masonry wall. Now this could be a load bearing dividing wall between flats, so you're commonly seen with blocks laid flat and with a skin of plasterboard on either side. A block laid flat is 215 mil thick, so do the, do the multiplication like before and you get a total area including the plasterboard of 4.2 kN per meter squared. Now that we've got the hang on how to calculate floor loads, it's time to do a load takedown. A load takedown is where you calculate loads from the top of the structure all the way down to the foundation. I still do this a lot when designing houses or residential buildings. It is a very important skill to learn and you want to learn how to do these quickly and efficiently. So the example I've shown is something typical of a load bearing masonry building. It's a three storey building with a timber roof and precast planks from second to ground floor. I need to calculate the load acting on the foundation. I've provided imposed loads as well, so 2.5 kN meters per squared is typical of residential loading and 0.75 is typical for a roof for maintenance and access. So the method that I'm going to show you may seem trivial, but bear with me. At the end I will show you a real example where I use this method to design roughly 14 houses and a flat in a single day. So let's start from the roof down. The trib or tributary area is essentially the floor span. So the floor between grid A and B is 5.5 meters, so the span onto grid B is 2.75 meters. Likewise, the floor between grid B and C is 4 meters, so the span onto grid B is 2 meters. Add these together and a trip onto grid B is 4.75 meters. So let's work out the dead load as a line load. A line load is a force per meter. So let's take the timber roof load I showed earlier, which was 0.75 kN per meter squared, and multiply by the trip, which equals 3.6 kN per meter. Remember, units. We can do the same with the imposed load. I stated earlier that the roof imposed is 0.75, so the imposed line load is also 3.6 kN per meter. There is no wall above the roof, so that is zero. Sum these up and we get 7.2 kN per meter. Now onto the second floor. The trip is the same at 4.75 meters. We will use the precast plank load from earlier, which was 4.35 kN per meter squared. Multiply by the trib and we get the dead load of 20.7 kN per meter. The imposed load is 2.5 as I said earlier, so the imposed line load is 11.9 kN per meter. This time we have a wall above, the height is 2.75 meters. Now internal blockwork wall had an area load of 4.2 kN per meter squared, so to get a line load acting on grid line B, we just need to times by the height of the wall, which equals 11.3 kN per meter. Sum it all up and we will get 43.9 kN per meter. The first floor is the same as the second, so just to repeat. The ground floor is almost the same, except you need to subtract the ceiling and services load before calculating the dead load. Remember that foundations don't just start directly under the ground floor. There is often a height of block work, so in this example the height of block work below ground is 1 meter, so we need to add that in. We can now sum up all the loads from all the floors, which gives us 141.9 kN per meter. That is the load we can use to design the foundation, which I will show you in another video. So remember to like and subscribe to get notified when I post that video. Now I'd like to show you a real life example where I turn this method into a massive spreadsheet to design foundations. 
So the first sheet is the loading sheet where I defined all the area loads like I showed right at the start of the video. Then the next sheets are all the different house types and flats. I've shown you in the example the load for one grid line. You'll need to do this for every grid line or wall for that house or structure. So you can see it can take a while, but once you know the basics, it is very easy to convert into a spreadsheet. Just note that design of the houses isn't just this spreadsheet. I still have to do a markup on every house which references back to this spreadsheet. This is important because this forms a calculation package which will be submitted to Building Control for sign off. If your calculations aren't referenced, you won't get the calculation signed off. I hope you found this video helpful. Not the most technical subject, but an important skill to learn to do very quickly and efficiently. I designed all these houses and flats in a day, which cost around £600 to our company. Our fee for this project was about 15k, so you can see that the returns are pretty nice if you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future videos. Cheers.